love to be a cosplay human being. But you know, but confidence <coughs> should be about your, your position in the Lord. Okay? You should have confidence in the fact that you know the Lord and that you have a relationship with Christ. You should be confident. This is the confidence in 1 John 5, 14 to 15. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. There's a catch in that one, isn't that? According to his will. <laughs> a lot of times, I mean, what did Jesus say in the garden? He not my will, but thy will be done. There's that catch. And it's a catch a lot of us don't like. A lot of times we go through stuff because God has to get us to a position to be in His will. As uh, Evangelist was long gone, he was the Lord said once. He said, "You know, God can't use you if you're not where you're supposed to be." And you know, a lot of times, you know, we have distractions and we have things in our lives that keep us from being where God wants us. Or sometimes those distractions move, move us and push us where He wants us for a particular reason. And knowing God's will. Is the trick. That's why that that uh, song in the back is on the wall. Teach me to do your will. Knowing God's will is not that difficult because God, it isn't God's will for us to break His commandments, is it? No way. The Bible would say, you know, it's God's will to do the opposite of the word because the word is His will. And I love one of my verses. I love to use. Uh, but I get a lot of flack from sometimes when people are struggling with being part of the church, whatever sanctuary they choose to worship in. As the word, the, the verse that says, do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. What that's meaning is, and I, and I remember one brother said to me one time, he said, yes, but I can have fellowship anywhere with anybody at any time. But, you know, but that's not what the verse is saying. And look at Jesus' life. He gravitated to the synagogue. Look at Paul's life. He gravitated to the synagogues. Look at Peter's life. He gravitated to the synagogues. Why did he go to church? Do you think Jesus was in a, in a, unable to fellowship with the, with the Father anywhere but church? Of course. He fellowshiped on the mountain. He fellowshiped wherever he walked. That's why the Bible says pray always. Because I'm ceasing. But we need to fellowship horizontally, too. And a lot of times, if we isolate ourselves from the body of Christ, we isolate ourselves from God's will. Another example is doing things that are hard. A lot of Christians think, especially in North America, that if it's hard, it can't be God's will. <laughs> How many people have done mechanics? You know, I've done a lot of mechanical work in my life. I'll tell you, I've done some jobs. And I'll tell you, I've rocked my knuckles. I've, I've wondered why I'm doing it. I think the worst thing I ever did was uh, changing the, the Tommy belt on my uh, uh, Plymouth uh, Voyager. It was the ugliest mechanical. I mean, I've changed transmissions, rear ends, engines. I've done all kinds of work. But changing that timing belt on that Voyager was probably, and I changed the timing belt on my small car a week before that. And I did it in, in less time than you should have taken. It was just like a, really easy. But I'll tell you, Christ really knew how to make a job hard. <laughs> and I'll tell you, when I was hanging upside down with my arm over the transmission, trying to undo a bolt that I couldn't see, but I could only feel that had to be loosened to pull something back so I could get access to the front of the engine. And I'm hanging upside down under the thing, do it like a contortionist, trying to keep the socket on that, that nut and loosen off that bolt. I was thinking to myself, who designed this stupid thing? And I said that politely. <laughs> you know? And when I finally got it done, after eight hours of labor, when it should have taken four, on a bad day, I thought to myself, where's my confidence? Well, I had confidence all the way through that I could finish it. Why? Because I knew I couldn't afford to pay a mechanic to do it, and I knew I was capable. 
confidence. Hard work or hard jobs or difficult things doesn't mean you fail. It doesn't mean it's not God's will. It's the opportunity to stretch yourself and get yourself going in a direction that you never thought you could do before. And it just gets you going in the kingdom of God and pushes you a little bit further. <coughs> a lot of you out there would say, can I do that? Hmm. You know what? You can do all things in Christ Jesus, the Lord says, doesn't it? Yeah. Which strengthens you. That, that last little bit's important. It strengthens you. What, before I was uh, in the ministry, before I knew anything, when I was still going to Bible college, and, and I, I prayed a prayer to the Lord. When a man was speaking at the church I was attending at the time, in my heart I was saying, can I do that? Can I do that? And a, few, a year or two later, after I was married in the prophecy in 1979, the prophet, who didn't know me from Adam, said, I had said that prayer. And this, Bill Hammond, he, he, he did, I mean, I don't know if he's still alive, but I mean, he, he didn't know me from Adam, and and, you know, I actually looked online to see, see who this guy was one time a few years back because I was curious because I still remember his name and he prophesied that prayer. He actually said the words that I said in my prayer. And, and in that prophecy, he answered the question. Preparation. Preparation. You don't do a hard job without preparation. You don't get confidence without preparation. God is building you. Just like, that's why the word talks about us being a tabernacle for the Lord. He is building your tabernacle for his glory. There's not one person in this room that can't pray for sick. There's not one person in this room that can't <coughs> raise somebody from the dead. There's not one person in this room that couldn't stand in front of thousands of people and preach. There's not one person in this room that couldn't sing. point is, is that you need confidence that you are doing it in the will of the Lord. Are you confident that what you do is in the will of the Lord? If you are, then you should be able to do all these things in Christ Jesus for straight to you. Right? That's what the word says. So let us begin to do this. If we ask, he hears us. If we know that, that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the condition that we have asked him for. Ask of him. And you know, the point is, is, if you've asked him for something, if you've given him and you've had a request before him, and you've asked, you should know that he has heard you if you know it's his will. I had a funny experience today, because you know, over the summertime, one of the parking spots that's close at hand We've never been able to get because we arrive a little bit later and it's always taken. And it's, and it's you know, it's a real convenient parking spot. And as I was <coughs> driving here, I heard the God, you know, I always, I was thinking and praying about parking where I'm going to park. Because, you know, the weather's not nice and I usually par walk, park four or five blocks away. And, and nobody likes walking in the rain, right? You know, unnecessarily. And I'm driving along and I heard the Spirit say, I'm going to give you that parking spot. And you know what? I had the confidence to look. <laughs> I looked. And, I, and there was a car parked in front of that spot, so I couldn't see the spot until I got right up to it. And it was there. And I thought, wow. And God said, I heard it in the Spirit of God saying, this is a sign to you.
I throw three verses down. I want to ask you, do you believe this? For the Lord will give you confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do you believe that you have confidence that the Lord is in control of your path? Do you have confidence that what's going on in your life is ordered to the Lord? Do you have confidence that even when bad things happen, that God's allowed them to happen for a greater purpose? It doesn't mean God sits there in heaven planning out bad things to happen to you. But he allows things to happen sometimes to get our attention. He's got a purpose. Romans 8, 28, one of my favorite verses, all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord and call us for his purposes. He has a purpose. In Proverbs 14, 26, it says, In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. You know there's different levels of confidence? Like, Bill, you had confidence that when you sat on that chair, it wasn't going to collapse. You do. You had confidence in that. You had, strong, you had strong confidence, okay? Did you have strong confidence that there would be food last night? Uh, well, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Well, I really did come up with something. You have to come up with something, yes. There's always something. Even if you butter a toast and butter bread and hand it out, we had a couple of things. We had peanut butter. We had peanut butter in there. We got bread and we got butter. You know, nobody's going to go away hungry. They may not be happy, but they won't go away hungry. You know? Unless they roast your peanuts, but then they'll be cranky and hungry. But you know, we need to have strong We need to have strong confidence. I believe God wants you to see confidence. I mean, I can have wussy confidence. I can have confidence that that I'm going to get wet. If I, you know, if I walk to my car, I can, I can have confidence that I'm going to get wet. That's wussy confidence. Why don't I have confidence to believe that it's going to stop raining until I get to my car? I remember.